This week's podcast is a great example of where we've got a loose working title and no idea what we're going to talk about. So we're going to dive straight into it. We're going to roll with it because these little short conversations between Jack and I, they allow us to live, be a little bit more loosey-goosey. We don't have to ask perfectly structured questions as we often do with guests. On. I have we can just got a list fat. here of 20 questions to ask about um, warm-ups that I've been procrastinating over for days and been formulating so I was highly highly prepared for this um podcast timbo <laughs> i'm not i'm just gonna wax lyrical for a while which is actually the same as most weeks um anyway so we are going to talk about why why your warm-up might not be working why your warm-up is the problem and why warm-ups are often really bad or poor done poorly that is a combination of the working titles we've come up with before recording this week's and hopefully within that give you some tangible takeaway things to a consider in your warm-ups and then b implement in your warm-ups so that they can be more effective so that your body functions better during your session you're gonna have better session better progress recover better be in less pain and be happier because you're making all that progress now, before we get into it, we just need to remind you, because you've probably heard it already because you listened last week, of course, that it's January, which means we have got one of the greatest offers on that we have all year. It's 25% off our annual memberships, which means if you want to come on a standard membership, and there's nothing standard about our standard membership. Yeah, why Jack, do we call it packed standard? Full. We need to update that, uh, it's just Because we've Let's got a VIP, amazing we need membership. a better name for it. But for £99, 25% off, meaning you get it for £74.25, I believe great it math. is, off the top of my head. Um, you get a plethora, that's a, a word that Jacko often gets wrong, it's a plethora, not O, um, of training programs, including all the specific movements like handstands, human flags, this going back to my training announcement from the other week, um, <laughs> you're doing more stuff, your handstands, your human flags, well, your body weight basics. The, yeah. the segue I was thinking <laughs> that you might use, Tim, for the offer was, um, you know, our warm-ups are that good in the virtual classroom for the for our online programs that specific and tailored for the session you're about to do that we don't even call them warm-ups they're called movement preparation and all makes sense for the rest <laughs> of the podcast but it's not just about getting tissue temperature up it's about being specific for what you're going to do and all of our programs are specifically designed with that in mind but then there's also the progressive overload and uh, as are their periodized and everything that you're going to need to make the utmost progress with your calisthenics training whether you are just looking for like a overall body weight training system that you can use at home or whether you have some of those um, iconic movements like human flags muscle ups handstands frog to handstand those types of things in your impossible box that you'd like to achieve in 2022 then all those available um, inside our online training programs for, that members get access to and as timbo said that 25 percent off go and bag a deal now and join us for the whole of the year because it's about being consistent over a long period of time that's how you make progress that's the magic bullet right so let's dive into this a little bit of a short conversation about why, why your warm-up why might not be working it feels like there's, there's some, some w's yeah on a wednesday in there <laughs> right sit back enjoy us having a chat about warm-ups Roll that jingle. Listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. All right, I'm going to kick you off, Jacko, with one of the most important things that we need to bear in mind when we think about warm-ups or movement preparation whatever else it is you want to call it effectively the first thing that you do before you get into the main body of your workout this kind of preparatory phase is exactly that it is the first thing that you are going to do and therefore has going to have a significant impact on how it sets up the rest of the training session so if we bodge the first part of the session and we do a very general non-specific kind of just half-baked warm-up we can expect that we haven't really done what's required to prepare the body suitably for the demands that we are about to place on it. So it's really important that we consider a couple of things this week. And one of them is content. Another one is intensity. And another one is kind of like bridges those two things together, which is the specificity of what we are about to do and making sure that we are prepared for it. Now, if I had prepared more 
uh, fully for this conversation, I would now insert a great analogy, but I need time to think about one. So I'll stop talking, you, you can talk, and I will see if I can okay, come up with one. So I, um, I will now start talking. <laughs> now, the, something that all, potentially for me now, uh, I'm on board, with, obviously, with everything you just said, but something that potentially like even precedes the warm-up being have I made um, some level of analysis slash check-in slash self-awareness and like how is my body today Dis like that then takes into the context of what am I actually like right now with this session that's about to go ahead in terms of like mood in terms of like energy in terms of like what like how bad what was my sleep last night oh just how is my well-being in terms of like what I'm going to then actually do and physically where is my body at and then i can start to i might have a specific warm up for the session that i'm about to do that's um tailored for that yada yada all those things but then having also like this is something that's changed massively for me individually of going and this is where i feel like i'm finally getting to a, like a good place with it is then taking that like the specificity for the session, but then turning that context onto like, where am I at right now? And what does my body need right now to then be able to go and do those things? And even this is something that you've been very good at in the past that I've not been about is then I can make an assessment to even go, I might change the session that I'm going to do based on those things. Hopefully that's not necessarily needing to happen, but that is an option um, for me. And then the other, th the, only, the other thing I wanted to throw into the mix was like, Testing and retesting, that's the only way you find out to know whether are the things you're doing in your movement prep actually making any, make, are they actually beneficial for you as an individual? Have you got your analogy now? Do you agree? Uh, a little bit. It's not, it's not a great yeah. one. I agree with you entirely. Um, the analogy is a little bit, the only one thing, I, often I can just think of like what things I like doing that have got a similar kind of story behind them. And one of them will be cooking. So it's like, you got to prepare the session. This is actually a really bad analogy, but I've started. I <laughs> Roll with it. Um, you don't just take a steak out of the fridge and put it straight on a fire. You've got to take it out. You've got to prepare ahead, Marinade. thinking that actually the, the steak needs to come up to room temperature before you're going to go and put it on. Otherwise, it's just going to be basically cooking a cold piece of meat, and that's not a good thing. Let's not get stuck down, because I don't think it's a great one. What I do want to just kind of touch on before we get into the takeaways around movement preparation in terms of how you can make it all that more specific to what you're about to do is just to highlight the point of what how often happens in many people's training sessions so let's say for example that you're in a group training environment you turn up and your coach is going to take you through a warm-up that warm-up is going to probably be well it is going to be very general and probably depending on the skills of the coach it's either going to be just some general movements which are going to serve the purpose of warming up, which means to basically get a heart rate going and to get the muscle temperature up a little bit, which are good things. But they're probably only going to be pattern specific for the workout ahead. So, for example, if there's going to be some pressing movements in there, there's probably going to be some pressing in the warm up. But where we often want to go with movement preparation concept is that we need to understand what the mechanics of are of that pressing pattern. So say, for example, you're going to come in and it's a calisthenic session and you're going to do some handstand push-ups. Starting off with pipe push-ups is all very well because it's a regression of where we're trying to get to in the main body of the session. But what about the shoulder mechanics at a more basic level? So have we got range of motion through the joint? If we've been sat in a car or at work or we just generally got tight postural restrictions or, or areas where we, we struggle to get range of motion to overhead patterns, have we done something specifically to address that for you? Now, I'm going to get a little bit sort of, I don't want to overwhelm you and get you into thinking, oh, crack, I don't even know where to start, but I'm going to highlight the point. So from a shoulder perspective, it could be pecs that are tight. It could be lats. It could be thoracic spine. It could be some issues around bicep, tricep. There's lots of different things that could start to play a, a uh, an issue there. It could be mobility in terms of this tight tissue or over overactive tissues. It could be stability in that your shoulders are unstable and therefore the shoulder is tight. So one thing which we want to be thinking about is if I'm going to go and do a workout, what do I need on that given day? Have I got tight thoracic spine because my postural patterns in life are such that that means that, that over time I've just got that tight thoracic spine, back can't extend, shoulders struggle to get into an overhead position. 
If that's the case, then I would be sensible before I go into a workout, which has got overhead pressing in there, that I do something specific for myself rather than going along with the group warm up, which is good in terms of it hits the patterns that we're going to hit, but it doesn't actually take into consideration how or the strategy of which I need to be able to create movement through those patterns. I hope yeah. that, that Can I say one sense. thing for people might be listening to this and they're like, oh, well, actually, I just train on, on, at home on my own or I train with my mate and that's uh, not in that in that group setting. But the the principle and the concept is still there because you might, if you're just doing quite a generic, generalized, you do the same type of warm-up all the time. It's just initially like, engaging this concept of like, Am I being specific to the session and am I being specific to myself, regardless of whether you train at home on your own or whether you train as part of a group? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, is that, is that bringing, bridging that awareness piece of how, what do I need? And, and that takes a little bit of effort, right? You can't, if, you, if you're not kind of invested in that understanding of, okay, what does, what does my, what's my body telling me that I need today? That's a real kind of process to go on of a little bit of trial and error effectively and you need to kind of get your head in the movement i think sometimes the issue is we can go into training sessions on autopilot and we're not necessarily that cognizant of what's happening in that workout and how we're feeling so starting to kind of dial into that a little bit and and that's where movement preparation can be a great feedback tool so do something and then see how you feel after it if you feel better and all of a sudden you've got better shoulder range of motion then what you did was a positive thing and your brain liked it so we can do more of that but unless you're using this test retest kind of movement um, assessment, it's it's quite difficult to know whether you're actually ready. So we go in, we do five, six exercises. We go into the main body of the session. Like, is that actually, have we actually done something positive, which is going to affect the outcome? So some really easy kind of test retest things that, that I'll use all the time would be an overhead squat pattern. Hands overhead, unloaded, like no bars or anything. Do a squat pattern, total body assessment. How easy does that feel? If I do that before the warm up and then after the warm up, you could even do it after each exercise if you wanted to. If it feels better, looks better, more free, I've just got better control or making better shapes um, in those top bottom positions, then I've done a good job. My warm up's ready. That's from a movement perspective. And I also then need to just layer on top of that, what am I going to do from an intensity perspective? Another one would be like an arm, like hands to wall. So stand with your back against the wall into kind of like a quarter squat position and bring your hands overhead. Can you get your hand through uh, to touch the wall behind you? That's one of the assessments that we do at a workshop or a retest um, yeah. process. If you can get better range of motion or you've improved the way that you're getting into that overhead position, it feels easier. Then your warm up was successful. You've done something positive and beneficial for that range of motion. So that would be my starting point. Like you start with movement. I've taught before and said this a lot around that movement is the cornerstone of performance. If you can move well, then everything else sets itself up. So it's part of our warm up should be about restoring the quality through the or quality of movement through the patterns which we're going to use in a warm up or in the main body of a session. Sorry. So. If it's a push session, upper body, whatever, if it's a if it's a squat session, we want to be thinking lower body or, or whatever it might be, think about doing things which are going to free up those patterns. And then we can start to think about activating a little bit more around the musculature which we're going to use at an intensity which we're going to want to to start to train at. Yeah, and I think that's almost one of the just picking on that last bit you said, you and using that that example you said like how um, a pike push up is a is a regression from say if someone was doing a handstand push up. As, as part of their session and that the intensity compare um, this is a, for a comparison of like weight lifting or weight training compared to um compared to body weight training where you might do a whatever warm-up you do and then you say you're going on to like doing bench press or or squats you're going to start with a lighter load then you're just going to progressively build that load up to the target sets that you've got um with with bodyweight training, it's um, as, as long as it it can be more challenging to take that like progressive approach once you finish the one we're going like building through that session, and because you're you're sort of like uh, rather than picking up like the slightly heavier dumbbells or putting a little bit more weight on the barbell, um, I've just got my whole body weight to do. And often I'll in the past I'll have done this myself, and it's the same for people I'm working with them is that. We're almost like finish the movement preparation stuff where I may have restored range of motion quite well and I've maybe got a little bit of temperature, but then I'm going from like a, I don't know, let's say like a 30% intensity exercise to almost like 100% because I'm going, oh, I'm going to try my frog to handstand now. And it's like, 
that we can still build up progressively with our body weight training once that warm up has finished almost like the um the build up sets to your to your sort of like peak work is an extension of that warm the warm up puts you or the movement preparation as we would call it like addresses the specificity to the session specificity yourself sets you up then to take that uh, and gradually build through that intensity you all um i think we've all probably been there and done it felt the bad side of it where you're like you think you're feeling good you've finished your thing and then you're like you try and start at too high a intensity in terms of like max one rm effort and that's where like if you, if you take the the, the, pr the framework that we use of movement preparation feeds into movement patterning which goes then pre precedes our strength-based work whether that be specific or, or general so the movement patterning part being this typically like the skill acquisition sort of phase but let's take a human flag for example we might do something to improve shoulder range of motion we might do some stuff to start to try and um, open up the thoracic spine to get us into that overhead position and the movement patterning phase is then going to basically serve as yes some skill acquisition but it also primes the system to put force down because we are we might go and do for example something like a stability ball um, human flag hold so in that position we're going to have to really cue kinetic chain integration so we're getting the shoulder to stabilize the pelvis in, in this lateral um, sideline position but we're also able to progressively start to play around with ramping force on as well so we can start that push pull pattern that we need in a human flag under sort of unstable conditions but it's starting to cue a little bit around force production and integrating some stability and expression of that asymmetric position which we're going to go and want to use when we get into our applied strength section which is then going to be very specific movements so that might look like as jacko was saying in body weight context because it's a bit different to a bench press or a squat it could be that you go in and your applied strength exercise for that day is a uh, vertical flag so we're just going to try and push pull in a flag position and take our feet off the ground ever so slightly that is still going to be a maximal strength exercise of a isometric contraction for let's say five seconds it's hard out right so maximal voluntary contraction for five uh, for five seconds is going to be pretty like red line for most people so if we don't what we've done in that movement preparation process is you've gone through is you've gone what's the movement patterns that i'm going to try and execute today how do i optimize myself to be able to deliver a good quality of movement or or or, or performance in that movement pattern i've then done some work where i'm starting to kind of cue the brain up for this is the pattern that i want to do and i can start to load a little bit of intensity towards it but nothing too crazy so i'm warming up the patterns and starting to get the new activity going and then i go into a stage where i'm going right now here's the main body of the the serious adaptation that i'm looking for of strength and it's high end high kind of like effort that's my kind of target total work so we i think that's just that there's a as a, an idea of thinking through what does your warm up look like and how do you sequence your training sessions so that you actually arrive at the main part of the session where we need that strength adaptation or stimulus for that day what have you done preceding that to make sure that you arrive there in a place where you are ready to kind of get as much benefit as you can from that 10 15 minutes or whatever it might be that you're going to focus on those specific exercises and getting that success and as jacka mentioned at the beginning of the, of the podcast the performance progression week on week of being able to successfully do those exercises well like we all know what happens if you're going to walk in and do no warm-up and you're going to go straight onto the bench press and try and go for a one rm like it's not going to be that good we need to build ourselves into it and the same thing with body weight training but we can take really actionable steps right from our movement preparation to get better performance and if we do that we get better progression because we're going to get better um, adaptation so we're going to move through so it's not just the quality of that five second hold it's what we did preceding that which is going to affect how quickly we then achieve our goals yeah. no very very if you can get your if you can get the your head around the these what hopefully can seem like uh relatively simple principles you're going to be able to change or massively improve the impact that your warm-up is then going to have and then you will start to see the real benefits um in your training and to to try to attempt to summarize some of these like actual takeaway things would be like asking you ask yourself some of these types of questions like and, and then put something into place like do i have some way so question one do i have some way 
or some measurable uh, action around like assessing how am I currently today before I've even warmed up like and and you know it might be that you've got uh, some wearable tech like a watch that gives you some feedback on like how you slept or your heart rate variability or something to give you a bit of a marker or you're much more of a touchy-feely person you like you know you've got an awareness give myself I'm a seven out of ten today or whatever however you want to do that but something to check in on yourself how are you how are you doing right now before you warm up then something that you're able to test and retest to assess whether your warm-ups are uh, and your movement preparation is um, helping you to improve the thing you're going to work on. So that test retest being related to the session you're going to do. So if it's a handstand session, your arm's going to be going overhead, you're doing like an overhead assessment. If it's like more of a muscle-up thing, you need to go more internal rotation and extension of the shoulder, like assessing for that. Do your preparation, reassess, and then and then the final bit is like, am I gradually building into my session once I've actually done my sufficient movement preparation or warm-up work? Have I summarized, Timbo? There's so Anything much in that. Yeah, no, it's great. No, I think it's so much. It, it, I sometimes when I listen to myself back, I'm like, are we just, people are like, I just want to get on with my workout, guys. And I'm like, what well, you are. Yeah, that like, doesn't have to be a long it's, period it's, of time, though. This is the thing. No. As, this is, actually, it's a really good point. As you get better at understanding yourself, understanding what works for you, and then understanding what your session needs, that warm-up can be very short. My warm-ups... My movement preparation used to be like far too long. And the reason being, because I didn't actually, I wasn't, I wasn't effective enough in knowing what was actually working. So therefore you just do everything and it takes too long. Like with the, what we're describing, if you're pinpoint with knowing what you need to do can be shorter rather than longer, I would say. Yeah. And I, and I think you, you start to kind of go, oh, I just want to get on my session guys. And this all sounds a bit corrective and that kind of thing, but just, to kind of contextualize it, say you want to do some pistol squat work and you've got tight calves. There's no chance you can have a great session if you don't do something about the calf. It can be as simple as that. Um, and if you, you, if you, by taking that 10 minutes, don't see it as wasted time. See it as optimizing the performance that you're going to get later on in the session. Those things are going to aggregate over time. So we do, we, we consistently commit to our warm up to being specific for what we're about to do, meaning we get better results. You do that for six months, you're going to be way further ahead than you would be if you come in and just kind of effectively just toss off the warm up and just try and do a few things that are not non-specific and then just try and get into the body of the session because you're not going to get as good adaptation, particularly in calisthenics. Like I think it's probably more important than, 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 than a lot of areas because, as Jacko said, you're having to lift your whole body. You're managing a large amount of mass. It's not the same as going, we're going to bench today, so I'll, you know, I feel a bit tired, so I'll start at 60 rather than 70. Like You're going into handstand push-ups. You're starting at your body weight whether you like it yeah. or not. Uh, not to, as we're bringing things to a close, so not to open up a bit of a rabbit hole, but you'll, uh, you'll like this, Timbo, so maybe save, maybe save the reply for another podcast. But I think the number one thing that, um reduces my progression and this will be very similar for a lot of people is not being injured that i stop training i haven't been injured for a long time that stops me training but it's the little niggles that uh just like a scratching there in the and you don't actually sort them out and deal with them that it just like makes your session be a little bit crap and you feel a bit crap as you don't feel i like really really is able to to push through that thing because that was niggling still a little bit but I sort of did a session and you basically just stay on this like plateau of just not really making any further because you're not addressing these things and it not not that it's the answer for all things but like having better more specific movement preparation for an effective warm-up will allow you to have less days like training like that more days of training where you like like I did a session this morning and I was like that's the best I've done my pipe push-ups, and it felt flipping brilliant. And one of the one of the little tricks I'm doing is trick. Mm. There are no magic bullets, but what it's like, um, I'm leaving leaving a little bit, leave, leave, leaving leaving something for 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 the next day, or leaving something for oh, you, you know, not killing it, and not and then if anything is feeling not groggy, not great, sorry, feeling a bit like off, either leaving it or addressing it. But anyway, but but. You, you, I feel like you'd be, you'd be on board with that. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you're dead right. And it's like, if I'm going to do an overhead pressing session now because of my shoulder history, like there's no, I will just go and do my corrective program that I, I know works for me. So I'll go and do some stuff on, on my shoulder stability and, and my scapular movement because I know it's going to help. And if, if you put it, if you, if you kind of listen to this and you go, still not, you still not kind of sold this to me. If you increase the structure integrity of your system, so let's take the shoulder for example, so it's very callous and it's specific. If you can improve the way that your shoulder is moving, your brain will allow you to produce more force because it has more confidence in the structure integrity and it knows that it's not going to be unstable. And if you're not getting pain, you're going to be able to one, put more force down. So you're going to be able to get better strength adaptations. And if you're not kind of like getting that kind of pinching or uncomfortable sensation in your shoulders or whatever it might be, elbows, the lot, you can kind of insert whatever body part you want to, then you're probably going to have the confidence to go through and complete those eight repetitions rather than stopping at six because you feel a bit weak and it's kind of uncomfortable. Like all of those things are the things that I'm seeking to address in my warm up, and if I can't undo them in that warm up, and I don't do that test retest, and I go after my warm up, I feel now like I can go and complete the targets, repetitions that I've got for that session. Then I haven't done a good enough warm up, or as Jacko says, I need to modify that session because my shoulder's not in a good place that day, and I probably shouldn't be pushing it that hard anyway. That's not weakness. It's not giving in. It's just intelligently listening to your body so that you can actually do what you want to do. And rather than having a compromised session on the upper body, I might go, do you know what? I have trained my shoulders quite a lot in the last four weeks. They're a bit tired. Maybe I'll throw in a little bit more recovery work, some more kind of like mobility things just to get them moving better later on this week. So today I'm just going to switch my program and I might go lower body or I might do some core stuff or I might do some pulling work, whatever it might be, and go and have a really good session at that. But my, my warm up has still informed that decision about what I'm going to do. And it just requires us to be a little bit sort of flexible and mindful about how we are kind of seeing that whole piece of physical exercise that we're going to do on any given day. Yeah. And um, if you're listening to this, oh, but the, so, <laughs> the biggest takeaway message is take your warm ups seriously, people. Um, if you are like, oh, what were some of those tests that, that Tim was talking about? Maybe I'd like to use those. Um, if you are like not sure about, what even some of those more specific movement preparation things might be. Um, every single program for our online members has specific uh, movement preparation and warm ups as part of those programs. Uh, the testing and retesting is in all within there. And um, if uh, if you, I know some of you listening will have like you've had a membership with us in the past, but maybe you've you've uh, you've not used it. You know, there's no um, there's no contract to them so you know if you're on a monthly membership you can cancel them any time but the annual membership obviously you get that for for the year and some of you have used it and then you, you, you've stopped using it and like actually yeah no but one of the things i might you know i won't get back on board and, and actually take this seriously do this properly and that starts with my warm-ups properly then get on board with that uh, annual offer that we've got on right now 25 percent off your annual memberships whether you want a standard or a vip but that does make that standard less than 75 quid so it is a bargain for a full year of training and check out the movement preparation parts for a starting point and don't be that guy or girl that Can skips listen. the <laughs> skips that bit now straight straight <laughs> yeah, to the good straight. stuff don't skip that <laughs> Some of us sat there going, but this sounds like it's just a generic program that's written for everybody. Well, you're right. There are some exercises, but that are, we are, but we've given them, as Jacko says, specific to the workouts that you're going to do. But the thing to also remember is that we are wanting to help you to understand and educate you. So there are assessments in, in many of the classrooms you can go through and you can kind of do a bit of a body weight set or a, a body movement assessment. And you can also start to kind of understand as you use the different programs what the different tools are and some of them if you're going through this process with an open mind about how they apply to me you'll end up after, after a period of time of going these are the five or six things which i know i need to do based on what my body is telling me and that's where the education and the power comes from so yes there are prescribed exercises which are the same for everybody but they are specific to the training program your job is to work through those and go these ones i feel like they give me really good value i'm keeping that one that's a tool in my toolbox and i'm going to go and add to that over time and that's how jack and i end up with doing five to ten minutes of movement prep and being able to go into a decent session because you've kind of just got that that little arsenal of things which are going to work perfect sign yeah. off all right, guys, thank you for listening. I hope that's given you some food for thought at the beginning of the year. Tee yourself up for a great year ahead by making one small change and that being a bit more focused on what you're doing in your movement preparation, warm-ups, call it movement prep. It sounds a little bit more sports science and sexy. <laughs> sounds more professional. So, yeah, until next time, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. Class.
dismissed.